Hello, hello, it's Otto from Base Brothers and welcome. Welcome to another tutorial about art style. And we're continuing with the artist lead series. Last time it was Headhunters and today is Sub Zero Project. And yeah, let's listen to the final product before we start anything. Here is the lead we are looking at today. Yeah. Sounded like that. And now before we start, uh, we are releasing this project for free if we get 500 likes on this video. So, smash that like button. Press that subscribe button as well so you don't miss any new content we are making. And now, let's look at the project itself. So, we are starting with the lead sound. I've muted the chords as well as delay and reverb and the bass line. So the lead sounds like this. And basically this is just a heavily detuned solid with some extra characters like a quarter pulse wave and heavy pitch LFO. And yeah, this lead consists of four different layers, which are basically all related to the first layer, which is the main main lead sound. And the other three are just complementing the first layer and filling out the things that needed to be filling, filled out. And the main lead layer sounds like this. Which is almost the full lead sound. And when we look at the look at the silent one, first of all we have both A and P, B part used. And on the A part we used a heavily detuned saw wave and also heavily detuned quarter pulse wave with one octave higher pitch. And then just tweaking the amplitude envelopes to make it less plucky because the sub zero project lead is not that not that plucky. And of course we have the pitch LFOs here, which are quite heavy and you can see on the other layers as well. And on the B, B part we have a mono layer and we also have another saw wave with two voices and heavy detuned and this is uh, band pass filter, the whole B part. And then we have some effects. We have a distortion here, a little bit chorus, some EQ and compression. You can do this as well in the mixer track if you like. And yeah, on the mixer side we only have EQ, some Saturation. Uh, compressor is actually turned off on the first layer and then another EQ to make sure that we don't have any rumbling noises on the low end just to clean it up a little bit. And of course some decreasing uh, equalization here on the 742 Hz uh, to make space for the other layers. And the second layer, yeah, let's go into that. The second layer sounds like this. And as you can hear, we have uh, opened up the release a little bit. And this is also heavily detuned saw sound and with some heavy pitch LFO. And of course some distortion. There's nothing too fancy about this. Uh, this is quite, quite basic. And we have the same kind of processing here on the mixer side, 
we have some EQ to cut out the unnecessary low end first, some saturation here and here we have a multiband compression with uh, slow reacting, you know, putting more time in, into it so it doesn't sound that plucky. And again, another EQ to make room for the other layers. Somehow I haven't cut anything here, so let's do that. That's better. Then, the third layer. We only have one heavily detuned saw wave here, with a little bit more pitch LFO, and it sounds like this. Otherwise, it's basically the same amplitude envelope things. We're opening up the attack, opening up the release a little bit, and we have a pitch modulation here. Why is it on B? It should be like this. Yeah. This is quite simple. And only EQ here to, you know, fix it in into the whole lead sound. Then the fourth layer, which sounds like this. And this is the body of the lead. And it's again same type of heavily detuned survey. Here we have one octave lower pitch. And yeah. We also have a mono layer here to make it, you know, mono compatible. And uh, the processing is only only EQ and the low end was quite heavy so we decided to cut or tame down the low end a little bit. And all in all, it sounds like this. And then on the lead bus, if you watched the last episode which was Headhunters lead style, we are using the same kind of processing here. So there's no need to dive deeper into that because you know, the processing is basically the same after you made the sound. We have EQ, some more saturation, OTT to use the multiband compression. Then we have another EQ, which is here, the low cut, you know, cutting out the unnecessary low end, some fixing, fixing on the balance, and then on the lead we are cutting the highs. So we're leaving the room for for the chords, you know, and the buzzing sound of the chords. And then we have a patcher which has the Yulin Freck Clue general preset. Yeah. Next, let's look at the chords. Uh, I think I heard in the original track that the chords are quite thin sounding and there's a lot of, you know, high frequencies in them. So the chords sound like this. And we have three layers here. The first layer is basically, again, heavily detuned soul waves and it's pitched a lot upwards because they sounded really bright and uh, uh, you know it, they had a lot of high frequencies and uh, we're using the same characters as in the lead to make it fit better and on the B part we have basically the same thing as in the first lead layer and first chord layer sounds like this. Yeah. The second one. This is more, you know, heavy, but still quite, you know, clear sounding. And to cut some corners, I used a preset of 
uh, serum and it worked out pretty well actually I think there was some some tweaking but not much so basically this is the same sound as as the preset written in here and only EQ here to cut out the unnecessary low end same in the in the first layer but here we have boosted the highs a little bit and the third layer again this is uh, Fruity Masters mm, direct, wa direct wave bank and this made it a little more I guess analog sound because this is sampled from virus TI which we don't have so this is basically a lifesaver for us and this sounds like this yeah nothing much to do here it's a preset it's recorded sound so not much to tweak there except some EQ and then they are all going into the chords bus which has the same kind of processing as in the lead bus we have EQ here just in case if I want, wanted to change something before the effects in this case haven't done any, anything then we have saturation again OTT with slow reacting uh, compression again the same patcher preset and an EQ to cut out the low end which is created by the multiband comp compression and the saturation next let's look at the baseline and I think this was the hardest part of the whole lead process to get sound at least somewhat close so there's five layers and I think the easiest one is the kick uh, which is just to create a punch for the baseline and I could as, as well use any type of you know synthesizer to make a kick sound but already I found a nice sample which fitted perfectly here and uh, then we have a sub bass which is made with silent one and it sounds like this which has a lot of release as you can hear in the original one and yeah it's I think it's quite wide sound sounding bass line I'm not sure how they did all that but this is what I made and it sounded quite close to the original one and then we have uh, this type of layer which is more like the character for the sub bass and a little bit of reverb and some EQ and this is missing all the low end because we already had it have it in the sub bass line so we don't need it and this is a uh, quite weird it, this was all trial and error type of thing just trying different things and trying to get the same sound as the sub zero project and i think it was quite difficult to be honest the third layer is basically the same type as the second layer except this has more high end than the first one and together they sound like this and the one layer that makes the sound actually sound like Sub-Zero project is this one and I was just trying out different uh, presets here in Serum 
and when I found something that was quite close, I took that, took that preset and tried tweaking it to sound more like the original Sub-Zero project baseline. Uh, this was quite close. I still am not sure how they made their baseline, but this is, I think, close enough. And uh, this is again low cadet and a little bit of reverb because we have the sub baseline. And together, without the kick, they sound like this. And with the kick, yeah. Okay, so we have the final processing left, and let's forget delay and reverb for now, because these are basically the same as in the Headhunters tutorial. So if you'd like to learn more how we made these, you should watch the other episode. And the final processing. Again, we have the same principles as always. Trying to EQ, EQ it correctly, making sure that we have the perfect saturation and compression and clean up the sound. And some, you know, extra reverb to make it sm sound a little bit smoother. If you can hear the difference without it. And now with. And I've routed everything into a pre-master, which is basically more processing to make everything sound uh, unified. We have all the bass lines coming here and uh, and the lead sound as well. And then it's here is a limiter, just just in case. Yeah. And that was the Sub Zero project lead. Remember this that uh, the point of this tutorial is not to show you everything, so you can copy everything exactly how we did it. I think it's more effective if you try to recreate your own. And now you have some knowledge behind the Sub-Zero project lead, so you can try try the same things as we did, but on your own. And yeah, in that that is the way that you are gonna learn more than just watching and copying everything. On the next episode, we are doing either Celtic or Disturb. Uh, I don't know which comes first, but uh, yeah, those are still coming. And if you want to suggest what kind of artist lead we should do on the fifth episode, leave a comment down below so we know what you are. What do you want? And again, thank you for watching. Let's listen to the lead one more time and see you again in the next episode. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.